um, during the during the uh, first meeting um, yeah. we, from our side, from the project side, introduction was already made, uh, and I think we can directly focus uh, on the topic. Um, and uh, so, floor is yours, and um, you're yeah. welcome to continue. Okay, Ega. Ega, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, and good afternoon, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear colleagues. Uh, thank you so much in today's meeting. Um, firstly, I would like to express and my gratitude to the Research Center of the Slovak and Foreign Policy Association and Le Levan Mikeladze's foundation, as well as the Slovak Aiden Friedrich and Iberton Foundation for the opportunity to have such an important and uh, hand project and regarding the energy security. Uh, which is a crucial aspect of Georgian energy sector due to and various factors and more attention is required and for the its and strengthening. Um, as you are aware, and we had a very fruitful and first meeting, and now it's our and second meeting, uh, where energy security assessment and indicators um, indicators will be discussed. Um, as you are aware, and the number of the indicators is um, and countless, but in selected the right ones will uh, significantly increase in quality of the assessment. This topic is uh, of interest of the meeting of economy and sustainable development of Georgia and which is a key and policy makers of, 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 of this sector. As, you, as I know, and uh, Natalia and Georgi and, uh, uh, have prepared a very interesting analysis and regarding the energy sector and the assessment indicators for Georgia. At the same time, and our and colleagues and from Slovakia will have a presentation of the same topic in case of the Slovakia, which is really interesting and for us to know when, what are the priorities of Slovakia energy security assessment indicators also, it will be impractical to hear in their experience in this direction, as well as in best uh, examples and uh, advantages. Um, dear colleague, as you are aware, energy security is a global topic. With this project, we have an made an extent of the following topics. First is the development of the energy security and smart indicators for Georgia. And second one is an energy security institutional and um, framework and design. As I know, and from ECA and the Levan, the Levan Michaelas' foundation and has shared this draft and legal and institutional and framework of the energy security available at this moment with you and will will very much appreciate it, your comments and recommendation. It's very important for us because and afterwards, and we will find, uh, find and turn this document, but also it's very important and uh, uh, your view and what is and relevant and the uh, indicators and for Georgia, what is and relevant uh, um, measures for, for my country, because as you are aware, now we are in beginning stage, stage and we want to take in more experience from EU countries, especially in Slovakia, and also with very important and international and uh, local, uh, um, uh, local experience, I mean, and uh, experts uh, experience. Uh, it was a brief information from my side. And once again, and thank you very much. And for all our participants, uh, thank you and Slovak government and thank you and local uh, organization and Levan Michalazis Foundation. Also, thank you very much for the local experts and Natalia Georgi but on a Murman, but on a Murman uh, I, I think and today's meeting also and will be very successful, which uh, all of us and very productive and interesting and meeting ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marita. Uh, we are a little bit short of time because uh, yeah. we have very interesting uh, topics to discuss, so I will be brief. Actually, energy security is a paramount importance uh, topic for, for Georgia. We will understand that. And there has been no uh, serious uh, systematic uh, approach to 
uh, discuss, uh, understand yeah. it, and then to develop policies for its improvement. So uh, this is a good opportunity uh, with the help uh, of OAC experience for us to uh, understand what are the main issues in Georgia's energy security to try to quantify those issues and to try to monitor and then to address. So uh, we had a, a very interesting first meeting. Now uh, there has been some development when Natalia and Georgi have prepared a set of indicators. They have suggested, uh, they will suggest it for your discussion. And we are looking to uh, interesting uh, discussion with all stakeholders. And especially we are uh, looking forward to Veronika Oralkova's uh, presentation on what indicators are used in Slovakia. So with this, I would pass floor to Georgi, I guess, who will start the discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll share you uh, the presentation. Uh, I think you can see uh, uh, presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. One, one uh, more time, and um, I'll present uh, the set of indicators we have uh, identified based on some research uh, uh, on energy security assessment uh, for for Georgia. And just to remind you, the uh, milestone of our project uh, is the following: uh, you know that uh, in the first meeting we assess the legal and institutional framework uh, of Georgia energy security based on the uh, about 29 28 uh, predefined uh, criteria then identify best practices in the field of uh, from in, the, in this field from the Slovak Republic and other EU countries uh, and now we uh, are presenting you identified energy security indicators, which might be used uh, in the future for tracking and monitoring uh, uh, Georgia's energy security issues, uh, different dimensions based on the different dimensions and principles. In, uh, um, and next, uh, uh, Milestone will be to assess energy security of Georgia uh, using uh, agreed, already agreed indicators and provide recommendations to the Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the next, just to start uh, thinking about how to identify energy security uh, indicators, it's important to uh, have a common understanding and uh, well clearly define energy security definition. Uh, and based on uh, different scientific uh, paper review and uh, international uh, studies, uh, uh, we have agreed and also our NECP uh, draft of any CP document provides very good understanding of what does uh, what would be the objective of energy security. And according to this uh, updated uh, the draft of any CP uh, objective of energy security is to ensure adequate, reliable supply of different types of high quality energy to all custom consumers at a fair price while protecting the interest of mm, national security and sustainable development in the short and long term, which is in line with the classical uh, definition of energy security uh, provided by you know, the scientists from United States, from European Union, and some other um, you know, well-known um, scientists who define uh, key principles of energy security. And I have underlined in this definition, uh, the key terms which uh, might be, which are uh, critically important in, uh, in defining energy security. And also in identifying, uh, based on these principles, we have identified uh, other indicators. Um, According to the draft NECP, we have will have um, the following objectives on the security dimensions are defined. This is to minimize the supply risk through diversification of energy sources and supply routes, reduce energy import dependency, increase the flexibility and resilience of uh, energy systems, protect critical infrastructure and mitigate risks 
related to cybersecurity and climate change, develop the demand side measures and establish sustainable power distribution over the whole territory of the country and stabilize the, and carb the energy security risk stemming from the occupation of Georgia's territory. So uh, as for the methodology, how uh, used to identify the energy security indicators were the following. First of all, we reviewed a bunch of uh, scientific papers on energy security uh, dated from 2000 until uh, 2020. Uh, review international energy security indices related to uh, indicators, including the MOSES index, international en index of energy security risks, energy security indicators for sustainable development developed by ADB and different um, uh, mm, international organizations, energy architecture performance index, and so on. Uh, also, we have reviewed the energy security studies provided by International Energy Agency, World Economic Forum, World Energy Council, International Atomic Energy Agency, and so on. Uh, so those are the studies we uh, reviewed. And based on that, uh, uh, we uh, uh, identified the dimensions of uh, energy security and then uh, uh, indicators. Uh, important things to consider based on this review uh, are the following. Energy security is part of the national security and our uh, uh, latest uh, national security concept of Georgia also defines energy security as a, uh, uh, one of the interests for the national security of the country. And uh, energy security is an issue of critical importance uh, to many different stakeholders. Uh, including policymakers, businesses, and large community whose quality of life depends on uninterrupted energy supply. Uh, the nature of energy security, in most of the papers, it's mentioned that nature of the energy security is polysemic and multidimensional. So uh, the use of energy security indicators, indices for, uh, for self-assessment for the countries and tracking its progress um, uh, uh, is expected to grow in the future because uh, those uh, the papers, studies, international organizations are uh, uh, suggesting this uh, assumption. Most of the studies employ uh, uh, no more than 20 indicators. Uh, I mentioned already that we have reviewed scientific studies, uh, studies uh, of international organizations, uh, also in, in this indices and indicators used by the uh, scientific uh, uh, institutions like uh, uh, internet uh, 21st century uh, uh, Institute of uh, U United States uh, which use uh, uh, all those uh, organizations use different uh, number of uh, in energy security indicators. And uh, those uh, studies suggest that uh, uh, optimal number of indicators should not more than 20. That's why we settle and uh, we agree that uh, focus only uh, about specific uh, 20, uh, about 20 indicators to use for assessment of energy in Georgia's energy security. However, we must listed, uh, initial list of uh, energy security indicators was more than 50 indicators, but then we um, uh, selected most of the critical ones and uh, um, uh, to stay in the final, in this uh, draft version, 22 indicators. And the most um, important criteria is what um, uh, in selecting those indicators are that they should be a measurable on an annual base. Uh, data should be available for that uh, indicators in the country because there might be some indicators uh, for which uh, the data uh, is only available on in every in five years or every in four years, not an annual, annual base. Uh, also, it should be clear and related to energy security, key principles, which I already mentioned in, uh, in defining energy security. So, um, uh, 
All in all, in six dimensions of energy security and 22 indicators have been identified. For each indicator, we have uh, compiled information for each uh, uh, indicate the following information, the category of the indicator, name of the indicator, description, uh, calculation methodology, value uh, of the indicator, and ranges uh, of the value. Uh, ranges we need to uh, uh, just assess benchmark how what will what would be the, uh, the maximum minimum and average number for European Union uh, countries for energy community countries and uh, uh, what will be the real number for the uh, absolute number for the uh, Georgia uh, data sources and data needs and assumptions for uh, the uh, indicators and those are the uh, information we are compiling for each indicator but after we agreed uh, to the final version of this uh, indicators. And here um, are these six dimensions, which are really important terms for the, in defining energy security. Uh, this is an availability, accessibility, reliability, affordability, flexibility, and sustainability. And uh, for each dimension we have uh, about 22, um, uh, in total, 22 indicators. Um, I'll start defining and explaining uh, part of these indicators and uh, Natalia will continue uh, for the other ones. Uh, this is the first uh, dimension, availability of energy in, uh, resources. Uh, and uh, the, in the indicators we uh, uh, identified under this dimension are the following. Net energy import dependence, which is a percentage share of energy import in total energy consumption. Uh, and this indicator is included in the uh, uh, energy union indicators. It's really important to have uh, those indicators which are already used by uh, European Union and energy union uh, strategy because uh, in near future, we will need uh, to use the same indicators for Georgia as well. Uh, uh, the second one is energy uh, net electricity import dependence, which mean, which is the same, but for electricity only. Percentage share of net electricity import in total electricity um, consumption. And here we use gross available energy, which is uh, suggested uh, by you know, the energy union um, uh, communication and study. Uh, also some uh, different uh, scientific papers suggest that in, instead of gross available energy, they might be used total final energy consumption. However, we prefer to use the energy union indicators and uh, the terms and um, uh, uh, those uh, factors uh, in defining energy in the, indicator, energy security indicators. The next one is the share of renewable energy sources in total final energy consumption. Uh, and it indicates availability of domestic energy resources and uh, flexibility as well. Uh, this indicator is included also in energy in the union indicators. Um, uh, important things to mention, I think is to mention that uh, part of uh, the indicators might be um, uh, uh, included in different dimensions uh, can be uh, uh, availability uh, under availability dimension or under flexibility dimension, uh, and we selected those in uh, under uh, uh, each dimension, which are more related to. Um, because uh, I have mentioned here the share of renewable energy sources, which can be uh, included not only in availability dimension, but also in flexibility dimension. But uh, I, we decided finally that to uh, uh, set on the availability dimension because it's more related to the domestic energy sources and availability of resources. Uh, gas storage capacity and old storage capacity. Uh, it will be good if GOGC and Mr. Temur Gocitashvili will uh, advise us uh, uh, what kind of uh, sub-indicators we can use under this uh, 
uh, gas storage capacity? Uh, should we use um, indicators based on the days? Uh, how many days will be uh, 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 sufficient uh, those gas storages to provide uh, um, gas uh, from this uh, uh, gas storage and oil storage capacity also? Uh, in the discussions part, uh, it will be interesting to discuss on that issue as well. Uh, as for the season seasonal difference in electricity consumption, this is for uh, to uh, assess vulnerability in electricity consumption on a, a monthly basis. And we use for that maximum of the ratio electricity monthly consumption over uh, the average monthly electricity consumption. But the same for the gas consumption um, on a seasonal base. So uh, my colleague Natalia will continue uh, the, uh, describing the identified indicators and uh, Please, the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so the next set of criteria are linked to, uh, to accessibility to energy. This is the next dimension of energy security. Uh, so here we have uh, access of electricity and access of natural gas. And uh, this uh, described as a share of households that has access to electricity. This is an indicator to assess the physical accessibility of electricity as a percent of total population. And it can be, it, uh, it, the data is available and uh, it's uh, quite straightforward. The calculation methodology is just the number of households with an access to electricity uh, divided by the total number of households. And uh, the same is for natural gas. So this is a share of households that has physical access to the natural gas network uh, as a percentage of total population. Uh, the next set of indicators are linked to the reliability of infrastructure, which is the next dimension of energy security. And here we have uh, two indicators for electricity, which is uh, basically the system average interruption frequency index and system average interruption duration index. Both indexes, data for both indexes are also available and it's been calculated and uh, uh, by the electricity distribution companies and presented to GENERC, which is a national regulatory commission. The difference between these two in, uh, indicators is that the system average interruption frequency index measures uh, total number of customers interruptions divided by the total number of customers served. So it's focused more on the number of interruptions. While uh, the next index, which is a system average interruption duration index, focuses more on the uh, considering the duration as well, because uh, the calculation is uh, uh, as follows it's uh, sum of all customer interruption durations divided by the total number of customers served. So it considers not only the number of customers with interruptions, but also the duration of each uh, specific interruption. Uh, the next dimension is affordability of energy. So uh, affordability, we suggest to measure by uh, the next, uh, the, the following indicator, which is exposure of consumers to price shocks. And this is measured as the share of energy expenditure in total expenditure of households um, uh, expressed in the percentage. So it basically shows uh, how vulnerable uh, households are towards the changes in electricity in, in energy prices. So what the higher the share of uh, energy expenditures and the total expenditures, the more vulnerable customers are. Uh, the next dimension is uh, flexibility. And here we have the following indicators. First, this is diversification of oil products imports. And uh, uh, this supply concentration index shows the concentration of the main energy carriers imports from suppliers outside the country. Uh, so in oil products, we mean gasoline, diesel, and all different um, oil products fuels that used in the country. And uh, this index is based on the famous the herfindahl hitchman index, uh, which basically just shows how uh, the concentrated, whether, whether the market is concentrated enough. And it's scaled in the range of uh, from zero to 100. And uh, this indicator is also included in the energy union indicators. Uh, the same we have for the natural gas import. Uh, again, the same methodology, but now for the natural gas, again, we look uh, on the con concentration of uh, market participants on the gas market. 
and uh, oh, this indicator is, is also included in the energy union indicators. The next one is volatility of hydropower generation, which we consider is important for Georgia because uh, our Georgian power system is hydro dominated and the uh, hydro uh, is, uh, has also seasonal generations. That's why uh, we uh, think that this indicator is also important for Georgia. And this indicator measures risks and resilience as uh, of, of hydropower productions. So this is calculated as uh, in two ways. One way is a standard deviation of full load towers over the average of food load towers, or it can be calculated and as a standard deviation of monthly production by the average monthly production. So basically it shows uh, how, uh, how much is the difference between average, average production of uh, hydropower. Uh, the next indicators for flexibility are famous indicators N minus one for gas and for electricity. Uh, and these indicators help to measure infrastructure adequacy because it tests the resilience of the system in case there is like extremely cold days or some extreme, extreme events and when the largest infrastructure fails. So that's it's the meaning behind this N minus one. So if we lose one of the main uh, infrastructure, whether we are still available to satisfy the largest, uh, largest share of the maximum demand that we can have. It's uh, uh, estimated both for natural gas and for the electricity with a similar methodology. Uh, and uh, we also have indicators for, for sustainability, or in other terms, we can call it also macroeconomic indicators. Mm -hmm. So these are indicators that measure, um, I would say, the whole system or overlooking the whole economy mm -hmm. and uh, energy interrelations. Uh, first, we have energy intensity per GDP, which is uh, quite common uh, indicators, often uh, usually also used as an energy efficiency indicator, which basically shows um, uh, how intensive our GDP production is. So this is the energy consumption in terajoules divided by the dollars of real million GDPs um, of GDP. So it basically shows how much energy we need to produce one uh, US dollar of GDP gross domestic product. Uh, the next one is energy consumption per capita, uh, which basically uh, shows uh, this is the calculation is also quite straightforward. It basically shows what is the average consumption per capita, which is basically the total energy demand, uh, the consumption, I'm sorry, divided by the number of population. And the next one is energy expenditure intensity per GDP. And it differs from the first indicator of energy intensity because now it looks on the costs of energy as well. So it uh, shows, uh, it's calculated as the uh, total real cost of energy consumed per real uh, 1,000 US dollars of GDP. So it also looks whether we are vulnerable to the price uh, changes, whether our economy is vulnerable to the price changes. And last but not least, we also have the grid emission factor, which is a common indicator used uh, for uh, assessment of greenhouse gas emissions uh, mitigation scenarios, and also it's quite frequently used for uh, national submissions to UNFCC uh, in Georgia as well. Uh, so the grid emission factors shows basically the share of clean energy in the uh, total, total electricity system. And it uh, measured as a CO2 emissions intensity per unit of electricity generation in the grid system. So in case of Georgia, this is mainly related to the share of thermal power plant generations that we have and uh, considering the share from the renewable sources such as wind and um, hydro. So the next steps will be for us to, uh, once we agree on the set of indicators, and uh, I hope that during today's discussion, uh, you will suggest some maybe changes or maybe some additional indicators or maybe some indicators can be replaced with more uh, with some other indicators. Uh, once we agree with the set of indicators, we will start a quantitative assessment of those indicators and on the next meeting we will present to you the final results of the assessment, quantitative assessment. Uh, and um, also uh, 
and we will do this assessment for the uh, 2019 because this is the latest year uh, with all the statistics available for, for Georgia. Uh, and uh, also we will uh, have some recommendations for the ministry uh, on uh, some big, I would say some big points that we will identify after the assessment of these indicators. So some recommendations how some parts of the system can be improved. Uh, thank you for uh, for attention and uh, thank you, Natalia, uh, for for presentation of this big set of indicators. Uh, we have a question and answer session uh, for twenty minutes for for that. But if there is uh, some burning and uh, questions for, for from the audience, maybe we'll take at least one question if, if there is such. And uh, if anybody has a question or comment, please feel free to inter uh, intervene yourself. Uh, Asil Koftashvili, uh, Head of Strategic Planning uh, and Analysis Department from Georgian TSO, Georgian State Electric System. Uh, first of all, thanks for organizers and uh, uh, speakers for perfect presentation. I just want to say that most of the indicators are very, how to say, informative and very, very, very how to say, very, very appropriate for, for Georgian power system, especially for the transmission system. I just wanted to add regarding the flexibility uh, that some countries also use the flexibility indicators as, a, as the capacities of uh, storages, storage including the storage power plants and including maybe thermal power plants, which which has also capability of laser providing. Uh, and also in some cases for the system availability in a uh, in transmission system, not for distribution system, uh, it uses uh, a lot of uh, load expectation uh, um, just as uh, just as parameter. Just it mm -hmm. will be it will be perfect if you if you uh, add them just uh, otherwise the presentation was very informative as i mentioned and very useful thank you very much thank you for the so advice I, I guess there is no need for for an answer in this case and i would i would pass the floor to veronica Orakova so that she shares uh, with us uh experience of, of slovakia Murman, can I answer to Georgi's question? Uh, uh, Temur, we will have a discussion later. Uh, okay, okay, let's let's have this uh, answer, uh, but short, please, because we have a next presentation, and then we'll uh, have yes. a question. Please and be very situation. short, of course. Uh, you can share, uh, uh, and I will show, but uh, I will say very shortly this, briefly this. Uh, there is two. Uh, significant indicators for gas storage. It's withdrawal rate, daily withdrawal rate, uh, designed withdrawal rate for our, uh, uh, our underground gas storage. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Daily withdrawal rate, which is how much gas you can receive from underground storage daily. This is regular and maximum. Uh, this is very important indicator and other total working volume of under gas storage. These two indicators you have to consider uh, when, when you uh, dealing with security issues. And I have some uh, comment regarding uh, when, when Georgi, when you mentioned the measures for for uh, for security of supply, uh, there was to to prevent uh, to prevent some measures. But uh, later on, I, I will I will concentrate on them because it's uh, not brief uh, brief uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tamur. So let's have the next presentation and then let's have a question and answer session. So please, okay. uh, Veronica, floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the work. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
I would also share my presentation and I would try to be brief to have to have a more floor on a discussion then. Okay, I have to put it also here. Okay, so I would focus on the energy security assessment indicators for slow not only for Slovak Republic, but also for, for the EU. And I'll explain and I'll explain why. Uh, maybe to start with energy security in Slovakia, what, what is our position? Uh, it is a country with very large dependence on import from third countries. And we are not talking about natural gas only, but even coal oil and nuclear fuel which is which is interesting that nuclear fuel is still viewed as nuclear is viewed as domestic source of energy and there is in a central europe not even a debate that nuclear energy is not really a domestic source because of the fuel imported so there are three key areas uh, for energy security, and that is diversification of transit routes and energy sources, then nuclear safety and reliability, but again, it is connected more with safety and not security, and also energy supply security. And that includes energy efficiency first, also good prices, which are benefits for consumers, then further utilization of domestic energy sources, preferable renewable energy sources, and also so-called optimal energy mix, which means that the low carbon technologies should, should go first in each sector, even, even, industri in, even industry. Slovakia is largely industrialized country. Uh, European Commission, uh, put a list of energy security indicators for, for gas supply right after the 2009 gas crisis. And this includes variety of indicators. Many of them have been already mentioned in, in the presentation. And these are divided into nine groups. The first are macroeconomic indicators uh, whether it is energy intensity, consumption capita, or the import bill indicator, which is the share of GDP and share of households energy budgets. Then there are energy balance indicators. Again, these were, these were mentioned, but it is also important to have transformation and co conversion distribution losses. Uh, there are also reserves indicators, uh, whether it is indigenous production or the gas reserves, then these are sectoral indicators, meaning how much energy is consumed within the, the single sectors. Then these are, of course, diversification in indicators that was the problem before the crisis. And it is not only diversification of routes, but also of, of suppliers. Then it is import risk indicator, which is cons which are, for example, import dependency and supplier shares, and then infrastructure. There are a bunch of new LNG terminals in a, in a Europe and also new interconnections. Also, there are crisis indicators, the storage flexibility that has been already mentioned also full switching uh, flexibility. That means if it is possible to, to go to another fuel in, in case of crisis. And also there is gas flow model indicators that means successful strategies or the pipeline use itself, which is an important indicator also for, for the market. Uh, the European gas target model is, is an ideal model uh, that should assure the energy security in a gas sector. And it is first and foremost the development of projects of common interest, which are the common infrastructural projects within the European Union. 
then there is physical reverse flow capability, which is, for example, one of the main goals in, in Germany. Uh, Slovakia had a uh, really, really problem in 2009 and the reverse flow construction was the first thing that the country did after the crisis. Then is also the storage and access to LNG and not least the incentives to increase the market diversification through taxation or regulations. When we look at the indexes, uh, the herd final Hirschman index is used in Slovakia as, as well also in other countries from, from the Central Europe. And uh, the values are not very good because up to uh, 0 0.2, it is highly concentrated market, but we can see a little, little decline. So the situation has been, getting, has been getting better. The reports are issued annually. Uh, also, what has been already mentioned in minus rule, is important also for diversification as uh, it is also the ability to satisfy gas demand in an event of crisis. And I put also the map uh, so we can see the new interconnectors of Slovakia that were built after the crisis with the neighboring countries. These were not there in case of Poland, it is currently under construction, and there were no rivers flow within the other, other countries. A uh, nice example from, from the region is Hungary, uh, within its aims to reduce import dependency natural gas. Currently, it is on 80% of dependency, and uh, the country set certain goal. To, to decrease its dependency. However, it counts with even 70% dependency up to 2030. So the number is, is very high also in the next decade. And the first and foremost is to find alternative gas sources, biogas, hydrogen, especially biogas is, is the source that it is not very much explored. Then it is also increased domestic production and extraction of domestic gas. Uh, very important is the access to LNG terminals, strength, strengthening the market integration, which will assure also the mentioned affordability and also maintaining existing transmission system connected also to the market and foremost rationalize the existing infrastructure. That means not to invest new new funds and uh, additional money. Uh, the country uses, for example, a residual supply index uh, measuring the reliance of a market on its largest supplier. And uh, the index shows whether supply can be insured in case of the uh, temporary or short-term loss uh, of the largest import capacity. Uh, when we look at the electricity, the target of the European Union and its member states is to have 15% electricity interconnection target by 2030. By 2020, it was 10%. To make a picture, for example, Slovakia is at more than 50%, so the country is very well connected to, to other countries. Uh, the connecting of the member states has become one of the most important policies of the European Union with an electricity sector uh, because of several reasons. The first is the capacity for electricity trade, then also improved security of supply, and very importantly, the integration of the share of renewable sources because that is that is problem also here in central europe for example the unscheduled flows from germany affects also our grids in in central europe especially in in the czech republic um what i would like to say that there are several several indicators uh that 
also measure the safety of the network. And uh, these are calculated in almost all, all countries of the Central Europe by the national TSO. It is loss of load expectation, load probability and load hours. And the last monitoring also the potentially negative economic effects is value of loss load, which is measured in, in Hungary. Uh, the regulation of, uh, of the European Union 2019 also establishes transmission capacity emergency indicators that should be the same for, for all the countries and the countries should head into this. Uh, the first is the price differential in the wholesale market exceeding an indicative threshold of two euro per megawatt hour between member states or uh, the regions or the, the bidding zone. There are various bidding zones in the EU. The second is the nominal transmission capacity of electricity interconnections compared to the peak load should be below 30% of the peak load. And the third is connected to the renewable energy and the nominal transmission capacity of interconnected lines uh, compared to installed renewable energy power plants should be below again, 30% of installed renewable energy generation. So these are again connected more uh, within, the, within the safety. Uh, when looking at the concept, I think that uh, Natalia and Gorgi presented very, very good um, indicators that are that are important. The latest research is, uh, of course, there are many many studies uh, on energy security, uh, many indexes, and uh, I would like to point to the to the ladies uh, to the latest one uh, which uh, adds also some some other indicators that we can we can have a discussion on uh, within the concept of energy security is very important the second point and it is the systematic reduction of hydrocarbon fuel reserves that is especially important for the European Union and its climate and energy politics. And uh, the, the indicators uh, provided in this study were divided into, into five groups. I'm not going uh, just one by one, but I will present the whole group of indicators. So the first is the resource consumption group. That means the energy consumption of fossil fuel, renewable energy, electric power, but also the, the energy imports and the fuel imports as a percentage of merchandise imports. Uh, the second one is also the resource depletion group. Uh, that was calculated as the ratio of the cost of energy reserves to its remaining service lives. All the data were extracted from the World Bank. Then the third group of indicators uh, is the resource efficiency groups. That means also the indicators connected to energy efficiency. Uh, another group was the ability to attract new energy sources. That means not only renewable energy consumption, but also other kinds of, for example, uh, waste or nuclear energy. Regarding waste, there is a, a big debate also in the European Union and also in Central Europe if uh, because of the high rates of landfilling, um, this, it is a very, very big debate uh, how, to, how to use the wa waste and if it can be used for energy purposes or uh, we, should, we should recycle first. Uh, another group is the pollution due to mining activities uh, that is connected especially to the 
um, emission decrease and also emission savings. And also the last was the access group. That means the affordability, uh, sorry, accessibility uh, to especially electricity. And that was divided into, into the rural and also urban population because uh, these indicators could, could differ. So I would, I would like to stop there and would uh, be happy to answer some questions or comments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Renika. So it's obvious there is no shortage of indicators. There is no shortage of uh, approaches. Now it is uh, uh, about understanding what is relevant for each particular country and how those indicators should make their way into policy. So how to, what to measure, what conclusions to draw, and what to do based on those co conclusions. So actually this shows to us that uh, just selecting indicators, it is a very, very start of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the long long and winding road. So to get to a more conscious, uh, rationalized, and uh, effective, uh, efficient uh, policies, I would say. And also we need to uh, decide and uh, make sure, uh, clear uh, understanding of what we will be using those indicators. One uh, basic uh, use of them is obviously reporting to European Union, reporting to energy community, which we are uh, doing already, prepare, preparation of uh, national energy and climate plans with uh, the priority of emissions, a priority of uh, sustainable energy use and so on. But another uh, deep and uh, very important is uh, national security and how those different parameters affect our national security. Because in difference with Slovakia, Georgia is not surrounded by a European Union market. So we cannot draw on those uh, possibilities that you have in your country. Therefore, uh, we need to be very cautious and we need to be uh, very, how to say, uh, forward looking in order to preserve our, our and improve our security in this field. So uh, with this uh, comment, I would like to pass the floor to, to audience for their comments, for their questions. Uh, and what you see interesting in this uh, presentations, what you see relevant for Georgia, or maybe what you, what's uh, simply what questions do you have? May I? Yeah, please. please okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, my, congrat my congratulations go to Georgie and Natalia for really a good job they did. So they identified relevant six uh, dimensions and a set of 22 indicators, all of them are relevant. Now, really, I mean, each of them would deserve a specific discussions how relevant it is for Georgia, because it's very specific situation, especially because of Georgia's very specific geographical sort of the situation and cannot simply uh, use the uh, uh, to make uh, the use of the opportunities we have, being loved, but having friendly neighbors with whom we can simply cooperate and uh, having one international sort of the common energy policy. But still, I would my suggestion would be uh, to add one uh, important element. It's my uh, understanding, but maybe I might be wrong. Uh, it was present in Veronica's presentations. It is being used in uh, Slovakia and other EU members. And I haven't, uh, I missed it in uh, the set of indicators prepared by Georgie and, um, and Natalia. And I mean the market, because actually we understand that in energy sector, the long-term solutions are only those who can be based on the market principles. And how the government will develop the market uh, conditions in the energy sector in Georgia. So this is a universal rule and it should be applied in all countries. 
And the more developed market in energy sector, the better for the country energy security. Uh, as Veronica presented in her presentations for the gas sector, we use this HH index. It's quite widely used, but I think that I would just recommend to consider because there are other uh, indexes how to measure the market development in the energy sector, but I think it's very important because in the end, this is the long-term solution. Otherwise, the governments should do something, you know, uh, to solve the solution, to find, uh, initiate solutions, make institutional measures, but the market is the best solution. So the government sure should transpose, I would say, you know, the, the transit, sort of the competencies, the less government, more functioning market, the better for the energy security. And of course, it's connected to the regulatory policy and uh, regulatory authority, etc. But I think this is very important dimension. It might become a part of the dimension you identified as a sust sustainability or sustainable energy uh, indicators. Uh, but it's, it, this HH index also might be applied for electricity sector, but something what would show you the government actually how things are developing with the market concentration uh, because market is also about investments you have to mobilize investments the people if they pay energy bills they also should invest into the development of the energy infrastructure etc cetera, etc cetera. so all that is connected and it is also a source of money for the government so i think so this market measuring market concentration for gas electricity would be also a relevant indicator and my suggestion would be to add it to the list of the indicators you already proposed thank you yeah may i comment uh thank you first of all alexander it's really good um, you know, comment and suggestion and to tell the truth in our preliminary uh, list of indicators we have included the market concentration index for the power generation and the market concentration index for the wholesale gas supply also in the country so uh, then we mm, uh, selected most of the critical ones just to uh, have an optimum number of the indicators but we will consider and uh, get it back uh, those indicator uh, uh, related to the market concentration in power sector uh, especially. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alexander. Thank you, Georgi. Yes, uh, unfortunately, yes, it, it's true. We are in an extremely high concentration, especially in the gas market, where 99%, uh, maybe 95%, uh, Georgi Su will correct me, is coming from one source. And uh, we cannot go too far in diversification and redu reduction of HH index, uh, but at least uh, some reduction, probably it seems that it is absolutely necessary. So um, any other questions, please? Uh, uh, Georgi has some questions. Please. Hey, hey. Please yeah. feel free to interfere in the intervene those who have questions. Georgi, please. Thank you. Oh, well, congratulations, colleagues. You may, really made the heavy uh, work <laughs> and very necessary work. Few comments. Actually, I sent uh, some, uh, two of them yesterday, but uh, I will elaborate on that. But before, uh, let me kind of follow up what was mentioned by Alexander and uh, commented by Murman. In the availability of energy, we have a uh, net energy import dependence. But would not you think that would be better to have net energy import dependence per a single source of electricity and or uh, of gas? Uh, because of uh, the overall energy dependence uh, may not be that indicative uh, uh, with the neighboring countries we have in the region that was already elaborated by uh, the, uh, the colleagues. So, energy dependence per single source uh, or, or sorry not energy dependence but energy import per single source or per single country might be a, a key indicator because of we are 99 percent depend on the natural gas because we don't have any local uh, saying that we are 99 percent dependence may means nothing unless we can understand that we are depending from the single source 
or from the uh, from other two sources or whatever so for the energy security uh, reason uh, uh, we should i think have kind of second layer of indicators on on, uh, on dependence of the per single source and that might be relevant for any kind of energy energy resources not only for electricity and the gas uh now with your permission i'll go to the comments i've shared uh, yesterday um i think i will find them actually uh well, one, one was uh about um, affordability of energy and uh, especially for the countries low-income countries i think uh, the percentage of the total household expenditure to the um, energy bills may not be uh, indicative uh, without um, integrating into this indicator either overall energy overall uh, monthly income or average monthly income or indicate or integrating um, uh, uh, energy minimum uh, minimum uh, required energy per household or per uh, per uh, uh, person because of lot of uh, most of the energy expenditures we have in the country, uh, especially for uh, rural population, they spend as much as they can uh, allow. But in the percentage, that might be the same as uh, the medium and high income population may, uh, may spend. But in absolute figures, they may be below to the um, minimum required energy to meet the, um, uh, the comfort level at the basic uh stage so i i think we should uh integrate extra uh extra component in the into these indicators having uh, just uh, uh deviation of the energy expenditure to the overall expenditure indicates nothing i even gave an example sorry for taking time but if an average income is above three thousand uh and the the they, they are spending 300 lari per month and if the average um, uh, income or expenditure are uh, 300 and they're spending 30 lari only all of uh, all the indicator i mean indicator for both will be 10 percent in the end this means nothing and we cannot uh, say that the, the 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 affordability of both cases are equal uh, so i think we have to think uh, a little bit more and introduce uh, um, another um, uh, variable to this indicator that will demonstrate the real affordability but not the statistical deviation of the overall expenditure to the energy expenditure or vice versa uh, uh, and another uh, comment was uh, and i will try to find it out huh? <laughs> Uh, it was about the access to the clean cooking. Yes, yeah, that that is uh, again. The uh, you mentioned, Georgi, uh, in your uh, presentation that you rely on the energy union definitions. Uh, well, unfortunately, we are far away. I mean, our overall um, uh, economical development level is far away from the EU uh, energy union, and so energy uh, uh, and so European Union countries level. So I think in our case, we, we should have indicators uh, relevant to the uh, underdeveloped countries. And uh, this IEA study, I will, I will send the link, uh, demonstrates access to energy, access not only to the electricity and uh, natural gas, but some other basic energy uh, services. I think we should have those uh, indicators as well. That will um, um, that may have a significant influence on on, on our overall energy mm -hmm. security. Yeah, 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'll comment. So uh, all these re questions and comments you raised. Uh, thank you, first of all, those interesting comments and questions. I'll start the first one uh, regarding the import uh, dependence. Uh, uh, in our list of indicators, we have only uh, we have not only the uh, net import dependence uh, of energy, electricity, and gas, but also in flexibility dimension, we have also supply concentration index, which also measures what you mentioned that uh, is most important one. Uh, what is the um, uh, concent um, concentration of the single supplier in the uh, gas or electricity supply uh, part? So uh, we have already uh, Okay. Consider this uh, in supply concentration index, and we use for that uh, Herfinel Hirschman index in this uh, calculation as well. So, regarding the second one, a uh, second uh, comment about uh, uh, the affordability of uh, energy. Uh, so, we are using uh, energy expenditure per household uh, uh, divided by the mm, total expenditure of the uh, uh, per household. Uh, we selected the expenditure because uh, even in underdeveloped and developing countries, usually uh, low income uh, households have more expenditure than income. Uh, because uh, it's difficult to uh, estimate and calculate the statistical offices for low income households uh, income, they can better estimate expenditure than income. So usually uh, uh, some, uh, uh, for low income households expenditure uh, over um, uh, is more than so, um, income for the for those households. That's why we we are using this expenditure indicator. And also, uh, not only European but energy community countries, Croatia, for example, Macedonia are using those indicators. And as for this, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the minimum uh, or average consumption. Uh, yeah, subsistence level. Uh, at the initial uh, set of indicators, we uh, had uh, uh, such indicator energy expenditure per uh, uh, total expenditure of the households in the decimal uh, at the decimal level. So, um, in the fir uh, uh, first ten percent of uh, with income uh, level country uh, households, uh, then. Uh, another 10% of the income household, but uh, usually in Georgia, it's difficult and we don't have annual uh, statistics for that to estimate uh, what is the uh, uh, average annual expenditure uh, on energy uh, per um, total expenditure in the low income uh, households. Uh, we have overall number, that's why it's difficult to estimate uh, uh, on an income basis, uh, those expenditures. Only in 2017, when we had this uh, Geostats uh, survey, uh, we had uh, only these statistics. But since we are considering to track uh, those indicators on an annual basis, that's why we are using uh, more uh, general and, uh, yeah, please. Georgi, uh, I agree that it's, uh absence or unavailability of the information may be, uh, well, uh, it exists in Georgia, not only in, in, in this yeah. uh, the particular area. But again, what does uh, the 10% for those two examples I gave to you indicates? Because of indicators should, should explain something. 10% of uh, expenditures for the poor family and 10% of the expenditures uh, from the rich family are the same 10%, but it, it indicates nothing because yeah, of the energy affordability to each of them are quite different. Exactly. So, but uh, uh, although we don't have uh, any uh, uh, statistical information, like we never had uh, energy balances till 2013, right? But uh, when the, the, the need was identified, the steps were made, now we have the energy balances. So unless we can identify that there is a need to something, maybe I, I'm not arguing that whatever I am proposing, it's absolutely, uh, 
even if something is unavailable, some portion of information is unavailable in the country, if we will not identify that this information is needed for developing uh, proper indicators, then we will never have those uh, information available. So let's discuss whether this uh, comment uh, content-wise is uh, uh, relevant or not. And uh, later on, we can discuss whether the, we have sufficient information to develop A, or B, C, D uh, indicators or not. Uh, yeah. May I interfere here, uh, if, you, if you don't mind? Well, I believe Depends that- Depends to uh, whom you are asking, Mulman. Yeah, I believe that the uh, issues that are raised by Georgi are, uh, yes, they are absolutely relevant and they are important and so on. But this is a perfect example of a set of questions that come next. Because once we select the uh, first initial uh, indicators, then each of them requires pretty uh, detailed analysis, discussion, and so on, and finding the way to policy, uh, uh, finally. Uh, yes, uh, I, I, I wouldn't agree, first of all, that uh, Georgia is the underdeveloped country and we should uh, look into that direction. Let, let's say we are a developing country as a, as a classification, so uh, underdeveloped countries, it's a little bit different thing. And uh, I also understand your concern about the uh, population who has, uh, well, uh, under, uh, is living on the poverty level and so on. But let me uh, indicate that this is the next step, probably. I, uh, the uh, average uh, uh, expenditure for energy, it surely indicates something. It is the first step. But then you need to add on it, on top of it, like inequality in the country, right? Which is, by the way, one of the uh, indicators for sustainable development. If you have a big inequality, then those things happen. And also you have to take into account the subsidies that are specifically given to poor people. So yes, what are you telling it is uh, important. It, it needs to be uh, discussed and so on, but it may be going a little bit further than energy policy. It goes to social policy and so on and so on, which absolutely needs to be addressed. And it is additional work that should be coming. You know, we have now the level of uh, folders, and then we need to go to subfolders and sub subfolders in order to have the complete picture. So uh, thank you for 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 raising this issue. But uh, these are are uh, the next steps for detailization. Uh, yeah, I, I think we we can devote a specific time for for this topic, and but there are many, 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 many more other topics as well. And we have to realize that, that we need to put together this initial uh, big scale picture and then go into details in each of, of the directions. Uh, if, you, if you allow me, uh, maybe we'll uh, ask for some other questions as well. If not, then we can continue in this direction, okay? And so my question is just, uh, if I may, uh, just regarding the presentation of uh, uh, Veronica. So my question is regarding the uh, ratio uh, between transmission uh, interconnection capacity and renewable energy. Could you, uh, could you show again this slide, please? Well, actually I had the same question myself, Archil, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, here. Mm, this one. Yes. Uh, nominal transmission capacity of electricity interconnection compared to peak load below uh, thirty percent of oh, peak. Does it mean the transmission capacity should not be more than peak, uh, thirty percent of peak load, or vice versa? It should be more than thirty percent of peak load. Uh, it's 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 vice vice versa. Yes, because okay, so uh, I have the same question. It should be above, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah sorry. Okay. Yes. Uh, because okay. uh, well, yes, I I 
would maybe go to the to the main argument, which is which is here, and these are these are the interconnections uh, within within energy security. But uh, maybe I will just add two two words uh, on on the previous discussion uh, that is connected also with energy poverty. This is topic in in a central central Europe and the complexity of this indicator is a uh, result that we do not have a definition of energy poverty in our countries. There is no definition in Poland, nor in Czech Republic, nor in Hungary, nor, nor here. And what do we know that this indicator that uh, was presented by Natalia and Gorgi shows the, just the amount of people who are affected, affected by the energy poverty by the end of the day. So it really says something and it is very important then to target the policies next. There is a big discussion in Slovakia really to tie the measures to the uh, living wage because it is, it is not working um, here and people are who cannot afford energy bills, well, they are not having good, good policies. So, yeah. Well, actually, is it uh, an issue of energy policy or it is an issue of social policy or combined? How, how, how do you treat it? It depends from country to country. In uh, Western Europe, in the more rich countries, it's a debate on energy. And here it is debate on social policies. Uh, for example, we have definition only of protection of vulnerable consumers that you cannot disconnect this from, from the grid. But the, that means also for um, as vulnerable consumers are defined also small companies, which is not very fortunate definition then. Yeah. And uh, we have cases of countries where public service obligation is applied to small companies as well, or even not small companies, or to all consumers. For In Moldova, for instance, it is done that way. And uh, in general, in uh, countries like ours, we are a little bit afraid of overuse of uh, tariff subsidization, which undermines market development, which undermines uh, renewable and energy efficiency de development. And this is why we are a little bit concerned about the use of that energy poverty to justify populistic decisions, which happens pretty often. So that is, I think, a common uh, goal for, for uh, the people who are working on energy policy to try to avoid that because it also blocks the uh, road for development. Uh, okay, so uh, any more questions? Uh, please feel free if, if there are more questions. Um, yeah, Mr. Tashuli had a question during the presentation. Yes, Tamur, please. Oh, uh, maybe I write to you because of uh, it's a third or fourth year life journey was regarding uh, mitigation measures. And you mentioned that important is mitigate. Uh, 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 so let's see here. Remember, uh, you mentioned that uh, cyber security and natural disasters have to be mitigated. But in our country, we have political tensions. When we're discussing about delivery of gas, single, single supplier of gas, we can receive gas from Russia, how much we, we will ask. But because of political tension, we are limiting that. That's why you, and uh, there is others also, as Veronica said, and uh, uh, you asked to them, uh, flexibility and, and uh, uh, reversibility of interconnectors. It's a big problem also, different from European countries. That's why I suggest to uh, 
to uh, stop your your uh, um, your, your uh, sentence to mitigate the risks and not detailing this because of uh, cyber security and natural disasters is small part of other risks. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, just uh, this is uh, noted and uh, from the NECP document, which uh, lists uh, the objectives of energy security uh, of Georgia for by 2030. So this is was just a reference from the NECP, not uh, our objectives, just the indicators to focus on the, those issues because it's a policy uh, issue. What you mentioned, what how much gas should Georgia uh, uh, buy from Russia or for other neighboring countries? It's a policy decision and should be based on the risk assessment and uh, vulnerability issues, not uh, uh, in this part of the uh, assessment of. Oh, thank you. Uh, Tamur, uh, you, uh, you, let, let me comment I, a little I, bit as well. Uh, 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 actually, uh, looking at the risk for country like ours, uh, in difference with, with some big countries or European Union as a whole, uh, looking at the risks of suppliers, it is one of the important uh, factors that we need to take into account. What you mentioned, you know, we are getting 99% or 95% from Azerbaijan, uh, maybe five or zero percent from Russia. But uh, what is the optimum? To understand that, probably we have to have some understanding of the country risks, which should be coming from some political analysis, uh, security analysis, and the same uh, concerns this HH index, you know. It's uh, one thing is uh, how diversified is the market, how many participants do you have, but each of them, especially in case when it is highly concentrated, may have a different risk associated. So taking that into account, that is another example probably of the next step of elaboration on and these indexes and trying to make to connect them with the policy. But unfortunately, I think we are uh, coming to the end of our uh, today's conversation. And uh, I would I would like to pass the floor to Marita for some closing remarks. And we will be looking forward for our next meetings and next discussions. Thank Marika. you, but Anu Murma, thank you so much. Uh, I think in today's meeting and uh, uh, interactive uh, was interactive. It's very useful because and when and we are talking about an energy security, we are talking about and key and measures in the energy security. It's very important for our countries because sometimes and I, in my personal opinion, energy security is all energy saving and maximum utilization of the local renewable energy and um, uh, EU standards and in, in high voltage transmissions in gas sector and crude oil and so on and so on. But as you are aware in these projects and then going around and the two very important and uh, uh, subjects and dimensions. Uh, as I mentioned and today and first is and development of the energy security and smart indicator and for Georgia. And second one is energy security institutional and framework and uh, design. And we are working around on this subject. And uh, as and Georgi and Natalia mentioned, already in prepared in the indicators and uh, what is and relevant and for, for Georgia. And I would like to ask you and the all and participants and please and uh, say a few words and the later what is in your opinion, it is acceptable or not, because as I know, and ACONS and has shared and all information uh, about and uh, this and the uh, document. As regards an energy security in the national energy and climate action plan, it is a more huge and part in this document. Um, as you are aware, and the energy and climate action plan and prepared by the 
EU governments, governments and regulations. And here are in five dimensions. First is energy efficiency and decarbonization, energy security, climate change, and uh, research, innovation, and technology. And so, uh, yeah, uh, it's a very important part, including energy security. And, and here is then the energy security and how to decide and how to implementation and targets in renewable energy, energy efficiency in 2030, what will be in cooperation, how to implementation in regional projects and what will be in, for example, how to, uh, for example, and uh, uh, implementation and targets in the local resources, so on. And, is and more huge and more different and views. I think and uh, these projects and will help us because and all the information also and will add in the energy security and part in the NECP. And dear colleagues, we think and the um, first draft of the NECP and will be an end of October. After that, and we can arrange a public hearing also and we can exchange and information what is in priority and how to implementation and targets and so on. Of course, and Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development and ready and to share this information. And uh, I mean, in the end of October, beginning of November. As regards and the uh, uh, finally and again thank you very much and for local experts and uh, our Slovak and colleagues and um, Levan Michalovic's funds and uh, very interesting and presentation and very interesting in discussion and today and I hope in the next meeting uh, will be a more practical and more uh, final because and uh, we will decide together and what will be and the uh, relevant indicator and for the for, for for georgia especially for the minister of economy again thank you very much about an moment thank you so let yeah. me join uh, and uh, thank uh, our today's outstanding speakers and outstanding audience who, who was very active and let me thank Slovak Aid and Friedrich Albert Stiftung for this opportunity that uh, they gave us to, to discuss so important topics uh, for Georgia and uh, revisiting also the, those topics for Slovakia. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And looking forward to our next meetings. Thank you. Thank you. I hope and see you in person. See you in person, I hope. <laughs> yeah, we do also hope <laughs> that next time we'll have an opportunity to see everyone in person. Thank you, Eka. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, bye Thank bye. you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Thank you.